Hey guys, this is Guan, and I'm filling in for Born Gamer for his ABCs of Assassin's Creed 3. I know he does not like Assassinate, and it is my favorite mode, so I have. he has asked me to take over this mode for this particular channel, so let's get right into it, starting first with abilities. Now, this is all personal preference, but this is what I personally would recommend. So, first of all, we have Smoke Bomb. And I know some of you guys don't like the Smoke Bomb and you think it's really overpowered, but I personally, I'm not bothered by it, so I will use Smoke and Assassinate. So this is fairly up to you. These are, in my opinion, the four abilities you want to be using in Assassinate. A mixture of these four, depending on the lobby that you're in. I would say in a competitive lobby, you're going to be wanting to use your shield so that you can avoid other people's smokes. I'm going to say, honestly, you want to definitely always be using your smoke. And I personally, I use poison. Some people prefer firecrackers and some people prefer shield, even in new lobbies. But that is purely up to you. But these are by far the best abilities. And then knives. You need knives for assassinate. There's no point in doing assassinate without knives. They are the key to your success in assassinate, at least in my personal opinion. And now we're going to move on to perks. Again, this is all personal preference, however, these are the three I would recommend. First of all, you've got Kill Buffer. This takes, when you die or get stunned, it takes one kill off your kill streak. So let's say you're on 6 out of 7, you get stunned or killed with Kill Buffer on, you'll drop down to 5 out of 7. However, if you did not have this perk, you will drop all the way down to 0. This makes this perk almost essential for assassinate for racking up big points. Secondly, we've got resistance. This allows you to stand up quicker after being stunned and also gets you out of that annoying contested kill thing after you perform a contested kill where you're unable to run quickly. It gets you out of this extremely fast. This is very helpful in competitive lobbies when there's lots of players around you. And finally, we have overall cooldowns. This will remove 10, 10 seconds from each of your cooldown, from each of your cooldowns after you have thrown the used the ability. This makes it very useful, especially in noob lobbies when you want to be getting that 20k score, which everyone wants to get. This perk is almost necessary. And then finally, we're going to move on to kill streaks and loss streaks. For kill streaks, I highly recommend you use the seven any kill streak. As in assassinate, you are this is not a stealth mode. You are not going to get many silence or even stuns. So please go for the any kill streak. If you're a really good player, go for the 7. If you're not quite as good, go for the 5. But I really recommend the 7 and it's, it's considerably more points. And then for Lost Streaks, really, I don't get Lost Streaks in Assassinate. However, the one I do have on my set is Score Times 2, as it does help you get back into the game. Sometimes with a 2,000 point kill, will get you straight back up into first place, get you back where you want to be. And so, yeah, let's get into the match. So for today's session, we're playing Assassinate on New York Brewery. I have gone for my Smoke, Poison and Knife set, playing as the Lady Maverick in the core design costume. And there are a few prestiges in this lobby. So I was going to go for Shield originally, however, I have decided against it. And I wanted to use the Poison, as there are also a fair amount of noobs who I want to be destroying. So, first of all, let's take a look at the Compass. This compass is exactly the same as the other compass in other modes, however it just looks slightly different. It still points towards your targets and when it is full it shows. It also lights up even more blue than normal when you are really close to your target. So taking a look at this first death, I went in for the knife stun, however he went he, he dropped the offensive smoke bomb for 100 points. Not a good decision, you do not want to drop your smoke and only get 100 points. In Assassinate, a smoke bomb can get you a roughly a thousand points if you use it correctly every single time. That guy wasted his smoke. Then secondly, I see this guy on the on the railings. I'm just going to run a rush kill him, take him out immediately, because getting discreet kills and reckless kills is how Assassinate is played. Not chase kills like this guy. Chases are bad. They're only 100 points, and it's not good. You want to get your discreets and your recklesses. There's no point going for silence. I go for the smoke bomb here, but this guy is a prestige player. He knows what he's doing. He's not going to fall for a smoke bomb that easily. You've got to be aware of this when you're playing good players. So I then go for the corner stun, but this is also not going to work. But you notice we've got a prestige 42 in here, so there is some pretty good competition from Divine Serenity. That was a good kill by Gravity Dropper. However, it was a shame as it was only 100 points because he got a chase kill. And he also managed to give me 100 points for my contested kill. Now, if we look at this, we can actually see that there are currently four people on my compass. There's one guy to the left who is inside my line of sight as the arrow is blue. There is one guy in the distance far ahead. There is one guy extremely close, but he's not in my line of sight as the compass is full. And if you look to the left, you see that the compass line is slightly thicker. So I can see there's another person on my left. So there is two people on my left, one person within extreme crops proximity, and one person directly ahead. Now knowing this, I have to be careful not to get killed by someone else whilst I'm in kill animation. So I'm going to go over here and poison this guy. However, he's going to smoke bomb me and then kill me. This is a very rare, this is a glitch that does happen quite a lot and is very annoying. Where you poison someone, they are then able to either stun you and then kill you, which is not good. However, poison is still a good chance, as this does not happen all the time. Notice how as soon as I die, I'm going to pick my set immediately. I don't want to waste time. I'm going to get right back in there. 
We've got about we got one thousand points. I can clearly see it's this night stalker by the way he's walking. He's fast walking, which is very easy to detect and assassinate as pl players do not notice this. Now directly ahead there are two players. One has just performed a stun and one is on the floor who has just been stunned. If you have just been stunned and you are on the floor, for the duration of time you are on the floor, you cannot acquire a new target. Therefore, this person on the floor cannot do anything to me. Whereas this independent who is standing there can still kill me. So my aim here is to kill the independent, hope that the carpenter doesn't have enough time to stand up whilst I'm killing her, and then kill the carpenter as he is unable to lock me as I'm going. Let's see how this went down. So as you can see, I was able to lock and kill the independent and then quickly lock the carpenter and take him out. Notice how I'm locking people at just the last second so my meter stays at discreet, but maybe it might go down to reckless, which is not too much of a problem. If you want to keep your meter high, if you drop your meter down to a chase kill, this is not good. It will only award you 100 points for your kill and you'll get no bonus for here. So now if we see here, I see this guy and I see a brilliant opportunity for a grab kill. So I'm going to use my knives, I'm going to go up, but he's been killed so I'm going to lock the independent and grab a nice grab kill. That's quite a lot of points you want to get. And I'm also going to grab my ground finish for variety because I really do want the variety. I notice how this... Night Stalker has locked me in the distance and I try to evade him. I notice he is a noob and he starts running away from me. However, he then quickly turns around and kills me before I gain enough reaction time to realize what he is doing. He has already killed me. So this was a nice play by this level 6. I did not expect him to come back for me. I pick my ability set straight away. Going to go right back in there. Now there's two people on the roof. Now I want to be the last guy to perform a kill. So I'm going to wait for one of them to kill the other one and then I'm going to kill the guy remaining. Because if I was to kill one of them first, the other one would then kill me, knocking me one off my kill streak, which is not what we want to happen. We want to maintain our kill streak. Here I see this coyote man. I notice that I have a smoke bomb and he is going to chase me. So I'm going to drop the smoke. I'm going to stun him. I'm then going to fall off the building and I'm going to run up, do the ninja grab kill move and I'm going to get myself a grab kill. To execute the ninja grab moves, you want to first run up the wall holding R1. Once you reach the top of the wall, flick, quickly point the analog stick backwards and tap X to fall just slightly off the building. You will f then, then begin to fall down, but you will, your p character will remain right next to the building. You then, whilst in midair, flick the analog stick forwards, hold circle to grab onto the ledge, and there you are, you're in your grab kill position. This move takes a lot of skill and is very difficult to execute, so do not be alarmed if you don't pull it off first time. It took me a couple of prestiges to work out how to do it. Now moving on, I've just been taken out by Gravity Dropper who picked himself up a nice kill. I'm going to get right back in there, I see two people over here. I then see a third person, but one of them has died, so I'm going to poison this guy, lock the other guy and try to kill him, but he's going to take my poison kill, so no problem there, I'm just going to take him out. Now there is the Night Stalker over here, I'm just going to jump at him because whilst doing that roll animation on the floor, you are completely invincible. He could not have contested my kill. In fact, I didn't need to lock him, I could have not locked him, he'd have performed a stun and owned me. And I'd have got a free stun. However, here, I go for the lock, I think I'm going to win this lock, bearing in mind locks take different times depending on your connection, and this guy's lock was clearly faster than mine or he saw me first, so therefore he and he manages to kill me. I'm going to run back in, there's three players over here, I'm going to lock onto a player and I'm going to start walking to build up my meter. You see that there in the top right, it's up to discreet. I'm going to try and build it all the way to silent and then go for a silent kill. So I go for the silent, but this guy has seen me, he's not going to fall for that, he's going to take me right out. I managed to unlock during smoke. You can do this by mashing L1. It doesn't always work, but sometimes it does and it can save you from getting giving the other person loads of points. So after that unfortunate event, I'm going to go right back in there and I'm going to go for the same tactic. I'm going to lock onto a civilian and I'm going to start building up my meter. But I see this carpenter in the head, like I can see the shield pushing around his body, so I know for a fact that is a player. I also see this independent. She's going to jump away, I want her to come back, so I'm going to knife her, unlock whilst I'm running at her so my meter doesn't run down. And then I'm going to relock her just before I kill her. I managed to pick up an acrobatic bonus with really nice timing and it's silent on top of that. Now over here I can clearly see this preacher, he's walking not like an NPC. So I'm going to smoke him, I'm going to stun him, we're then going to move into the blend group so people can't see us. This carpenter is going to lock us, somehow I'm going to get the free stun, I don't know how this works. I'm going to pop back into the group, I'm going to silent kill this guy, the, in, the, the preacher has killed a civilian, I'm going to kill him as well because when you kill a civilian you can't do anything and there we have it, I got my extreme variety, that's a lot of points I just got there. Now again, there's two people, one's performing the stun, so I want to kill the guy that performed the stun first before killing the guy on the floor, but I'm going to give him a dose of AIDS so that he can go and sleep with the fish. And then see the preacher over here, I'm going to aerial him. Aerial is normally a good bonus to go for for extreme variety, however, since I'd already had it, I should have gone for the acrobatic there, and I'm, shame I'm ashamed that I didn't. Now moving on to over here, I, s I believe it's this Night Stalker, and I'm going for the trick to build up my meter but then I see he's actually walking off in the distance so I'm just going to run over and quickly take him out. 
and they're going to run over this way to avoid being roofed from over there. You do not want to get roofed and assassinate. It will waste your time as you die. Now, I see over here, someone's got the easy chase breaker perk, which is not a good perk you want to be using, and it's this guy. And we're going to knife each other simultaneously. I then expect him to unlock me and give me an escape. However, he doesn't. He wants to come in for the chase kill, and I'm having none of that. I'm not going to get let you have a chase kill on me. I'm just going to run away, make my escape, and hope he doesn't kill me. He does un un unlock, and he doesn't give me an escape. This does happen in this game. You don't always get escapes from unlocks. I don't know why, but it is a glitch. I'm going to sit in this blend group, and this guy's going to come right to me. He had no idea I was here. I pick up a really nice hidden kill. I then see this carpenter trying to be all fancy in the corner there, and I'm just going to tell him to sit right down. Take a hook to the face, sir. I then see this guy attacking the hay bale. I try to lock the hay. I fail at first, but I persevere, and I lock him again. And I'm going to see there's two people. I'm going to go for this guy. I'm going to attempt to lock him, my lock's going to freeze, and it's going to disconnect me from the game. And unfortunately, that, this is what happens to me in Assassinate. So don't be afraid if it disconnects you, get right back into the game. And I hope to see you guys playing some more Assassinate because I really love this mode. So yeah, I'll catch you guys later. I am Guana. Make sure to subscribe to Born Gamer for more awesome series and tips and tricks. I'll catch you all later. Bye.